and welcome back to, I want to say new edition, but a, uh, by popular demand we've been, uh, we've actually been asked by, I think it's six chairmen I've got in writing now so far from Super League saying will we do a review and will you keep Mick Gleddle out of the review, well <laughs> on both counts we're going to do it, uh, Mickey's going to come and do a champ and champ one review and then we're going to have a little bit of IMG later on, but for this one it's purely a Super League review, we're going to go through every team, we're going to try and say the ins and outs, I'm going to try and give an opinion, and if we've got the pen and the paper, we will actually put down our choices for 1 to 12, guys, yeah? So, Joe, first of all, um, you've been busy over Christmas, haven't you? Yeah, very busy. Back, big New Year, you've been back to America, you're back, back and forward a few times since we last did the show? No. <laughs> Once we'll do a take, we'll, we'll do a take <laughs> on that because this is going to be hard work. I mean, <laughs> already, you just made that up. <laughs> there we go. I said to Joe off the record, let's keep egos out of it. And first thing he's done, he said, That's not actually true, Dad. That's not like ego. You used to do when you oh, 15. god, you're in a right mood. I'm not <laughs> Jimmy. I'll move on to you. Anything to anything new? <laughs> I, I, how many games have you, have you been? Have you seen any games? Yeah, a couple of pre season friendlies, and then um. 1895 Cup started at the weekend, so went to Dewsbury, Keithley. Interesting game. So, yeah, we've got what feels like the longest season of all time coming. Um, it's going to be it's going to be interesting, you know, especially you know, for the champion league. You know what? You get, you get to end it here, and I, I've had enough of rugby. I, I, I've started, started to happen to me when I get to that last, probably before semi finals, I get buzzing again semi finals, mm. but I have about a period of six weeks. But I've missed it. I've 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 missed it a lot. Yeah. Um, we carry on obviously doing deals and, and you're, you're always in and out of things. But that's they miss watching rugby. So I've been to a couple with Joe uh, and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. But I definitely needed my fix it, it with yeah. and I hope everyone's the same and um, some exciting things coming up. But just ju just regardless of of that, I think it's fantastic. I actually went to Wakefield on uh, Wednesday. And people are saying about new money coming into rugby league, and mm. we need new people and new investors. Well, good on you, Wakey. You've got one because that was the most impressive. He took me around his factory. I've, uh, oh, right. I've done a deal for a couple of kitchens, a couple of players on an exchange. <laughs> I'll mention <laughs> them, but he, he, this is a serious guy. Yeah. This is a serious, serious guy. And good luck to, to, to all Wakey fans because you can have a nice five to ten years. It's a roller coaster. I, I watched him pre season. And I thought for 60 minutes against Leeds, they, look, they just looked, I couldn't believe it. So yeah, we were all at that one, weren't we? We're they're going to give the championship impressive. some some real booster and the fans and the thing. But he, this guy's a serious guy. I, I went to the restaurant in the, in the stadium, uh, but he's building, sorry for the lads. It's like, a, I've never, I can't believe it. They're, they're like any <laughs> breakout room, yeah. Yeah, they've got ice cold baths. They've got, I mean, Wakey were famous for having ice cold showers, but that because yeah. they were fought eating. Yeah. You know, they, they were struggling because they always had cold showers. That were a bit of a joke with lads, yeah. but first thing, this guy, everything seems to be, he wants the best and the best mm. and the best. And I, I, I'll not add to the rumour, but if it's true, we'll have signed for next year. Wow. 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 And that's three wows. That's three players we think they've signed for wow. next year already, which Fuck. will be absolutely enthralling. So there's a little plug. Thank you for having me. Right, guys, we're going to start off with Cass. I'll do the ins and the outs. We've got ins. Nixon Putt. Ellie El Sakim. I hope I pronounced that right. I haven't got Mick Gleddle to correct us. Sylvester Namo. Josh Hodson. From Bartley. Josh Sims. Sam Ward. Luke Cooley. Rowan Mills. In his senior. Sammy Kabula. Lewis Johnson. Outs. Nile Levels. Jordan Turner. Nathan Massey, Craig Eden, wow, Alex Sutcliffe, Jacob Buckham, Bailey Dawson, Kieran Hudson, to Leeds. <clears throat> I think I did that. One, two. Ikeem Maffey, Sueg Matagi, Blake Austin, Billy Tisarikas, John Johnson, Alex Foster, Kenny Edwards, Elliot Wallace, Gareth Winnup, Aaron Wills, Courage. Mukandi, my God, I never realised. I'm sorry if I do pronounce it wrong. It's certainly not uh, personally. It's because I'm a bit, I'm a bit dyslexic. But I'm just looking there, guys. One thing that stuck out for me straight away is I didn't. What's the overseas cap on that? It looks like they've changed seven or eight overseas and brought in seven or eight 
Oh, you mean the actual turnover on... Yeah, on um, that's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, most of the business has been Three, there. Four. Quota spots in, ins and outs, I think. Four, it looks like. Four. Four, four in. Four in, which is a massive... I think they've still got one left, I believe, as well. Uh, they've still got a spot left, so I think that's what, that's where they might be looking mid-season or going on in the season. Um, they've got... We saw a bit of Nixon put last year, I believe. What... I don't, I don't know. No, I don't. Know. It's, it's, it's new to I'm me. Gonna, listen, no, but the first thing we'll talk about, obviously, is the managerial. Uh, obviously, now you're, you're looking at the new coaching staff Craig yeah. Lingard and Danny Maguire uh, with Scott Moore. Um, I'll give a little bit of input because I, I, I obviously want in the Danny Maguire deal. Uh, Danny left Hull KR. Uh, Probably not by choice, if I'll be honest. I'm, and I said I'd tell the truth, you know, not by choice. It was quite a, a shock, really, for Dan. Uh, but that's business and that's that's rugby, and he's a big lad. Um, he, he, they treat him fantastic at OKR. They give him a great opportunity. But he repaid them on and off the field, and I, and I, and I really thought. But anyway, we moved on, and the opportunity came to, to go and meet Cass. And I think it was as a maybe as a first-team coach not assistant you know Danny made it clear straight away that he wasn't uh, anywhere near the finished article and I thought it was very brave of him because ego in a lot of sportsmen tells you you want that job and just for the record I would have definitely took the job because my egos would have not relished the challenge Danny said not ready not prepared to put me sent through that until I'm finished I've, I've got a journey and then I'll tell you when I'm ready uh, he got there Craig Lingard fantastic job at Batley uh, with an older set of players, you know, he seemed to suit the championship. He, he certainly batted above his average for probably five, six years based on the budget we think he were on. Uh, he'd unbelievable. A lot of the lads, you know, Joe especially always talked very highly of him to me. Uh, Jimmy, you know, you, you've dealt with him, haven't you? He's yeah, always been high Brilliant. brilliant. Uh, what do we think? <clears throat> yeah, it's great. I think a great signing is hopefully He's made a few, he's bought a few Batley players and in, so let's see if he's got them right. I think that will be the big one. Josh Hodgson bought in Sammy Kabula. He's obviously bought in Luke Cooley, ex Batley player, so I'm classing that as a, um, he knows, you know what I mean? He has close connection there with the signing. Uh, well, we'll see, won't he? I think he did such a good job uh, under budget. What Cass are going with at the moment, they've not got the same brass, the same firepower as they had in uh, earlier years, and um, I don't think there's probably a better man in rugby league that fits that bill. Getting the most out of the players, man, he was known for his man management over there. Um, <clears throat> great at juvenate, rejuvenating the squad, getting them hungry, getting them at it. He's a bloke that you want to be friends with. Everyone like you, you never. I don't think I've ever heard a bad word about Greg Lingard as a person. So I think he's one of them that you want to play behind and. Uh, uh, hopefully, he, hopefully he creates something here at Cass that can uh, go on for many years. That's cause that's what they need essentially, isn't it? I think the downside is where the squad is at, where they're at as a team. They put they need someone who's going to rejuvenate the squad and go for three or four, or five years and have a long term turnaround here. Jimmy, yeah, I think what Joe said about the, his man management side of things, combined with Danny's keen coaching eye. I think it could work out a nice little partnership. I'd like to think that there's not an awful lot of pressure on him because I think most people from the outside in will probably not expect Cass to be certainly not challenging for the playoffs, maybe a few optimistic fans. I think that's important. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want them to be under a load of pressure and, and expected to get an awful lot of results because that could probably backfire like it does in most situations. I think if they if it's if everyone, especially their fans, are understanding of the, uh, you know, with respect the roster they've got compared to other clubs, then I think it should be like Joe said. It, it's about stage one of their next years of development, and first and foremost, most of that has got to be off the field to make sure that they're still a Super League club because like you touched upon before, Wakefield have by all accounts pretty much guaranteed their return to Super League and they've gone from being in a world of pain six months ago or nine months ago certainly to, to being one of the most exciting clubs going now and Cass are, Cass are getting left behind so I think they've got as many 
things to deal with off the field and hopefully you know those lads Danny and Craig can can get the best out of that team and with with their man management and the the immediate respect that Danny Maguire commands I'd like to think they'll have a good team spirit and they can pick up a few a few wins here and there and maybe not be quite as low down as most think optimistic yeah, well, yeah I think you I think you both cocked out there a bit because I'm going to put it on you both straight away and say you didn't inspire me much there guys you, 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 you like telling the story about how you know give this man a chance give this give this give that based on your signings you haven't really said I'm assuming you both think we're going to be in the bottom three yeah yeah right well that's it and that, that's what I was thinking Cause by the side of listening to you I was thinking you weren't really encouraging enough to say you know these could actually get in top eight we've got them in bottom, bottom three yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I don't. I think that's bottom four. If we're being, I, d I don't see him challenging to the playoffs. You no, know, that, we'll get you. Know. We'll get the. We're going to put him in order at the end. I, I, I don't want. I'd, I'd rather you. If we're going to talk about it, I'm thinking if you're saying that and then you say, "Oh, they're going to finish eleventh I don't think we'd be shocked, would we? No, I think that's fair to what we said, though, isn't it? That's mm -hmm. you I think, think I, what by what I said sounded like they're going to. I think you, I think you'd give a very good PR version of what you're thinking. Be honest, with you. I'm going to. No, but you asked about no, Dan, you asked exactly, about Danny and exactly, Lingard. Didn't yeah, you, that's exactly that. what I'm thinking. Craig and Danny have got a hell of a job on their hands because Cass's downfall has not been a one-year collapse job. It's been a six-year, six-year, seven yeah. decline since that great two seasons they had been a slow decline ever since of making wrong decision after wrong decision so to expect anything other than just being a bit positive saying these lads could I think fit the job title very well in what they need and that it's going to be a five-year process here minimum to get any sort of success these are these these Danny Craig can be the two to do it Craig's had Craig's had one of the toughest jobs in rugby and done a great job year after year and Danny is one of the most inspiring up and coming coaches in the game, really tactical in what you hear from the players, in what he's coaching and what he's learning them. So that if there's two people that you want to bring a five year process in, that there there won't be two others that I'd really pick. So I'd give I'd give them that credit. Have they got one of the toughest jobs in rugby league on their hands? Yes, without doubt. Well, I think apart from London, it's the toughest. That's but I don't think there's any pressure on London. I think everyone, once AMG did what they did, yeah. positioned them where they did, <clears throat> I think it was like 18th. I think that were it. I think Mike and the lads can go and have a, a right go at it. No pressure. Yeah. See if you can get a few. Tools. Listen, I'm looking at I'm looking at Cass's squad. I'm looking at everything about Cass. You know, I can remember when we talked in 16, 17, 18. I don't like saying that, but we probably had nine in Dream Team and, you know, three men of steel. They were crazy. I don't think we'd be lucky to get you know anybody if Cass can get somebody in that dream team at the end of the year I think that'd be absolutely huge mm. I've not I've never been keen on older legs I think they should have met the uh, exchange two or three years ago there's not been a lot coming from academy I think he stood out our lad last year uh, just give him a little glimpse of what's coming uh, hopefully yeah Fletch young Fletcher Rooney uh, we've got a few more you know the two or three the halfback Jaden Jaden and a few others are you looking but Historically, Cass have not underdeveloped. And I get asked this a lot. They say, oh, how come a lot of Cass humans end up at Leeds and end up at this? It does. It goes off every year. Yeah. We, you know, we've just done a, a young man. I'll give him a bit of a rap. I, I, I think he's one of the oddest talents I've ever, you know, I've ever seen. And I hope he plays half back. You know, and I hope I'm not putting pressure on him so don't get all that. I don't want John Bastin saying, look, you know. Jacob Hardy, but he's from Cass. You know, he's at, he's at, he's at Leeds, and it's a, it's a real challenge for Cass to get sure that they this don't happen because I don't know if they're taking the salary cap based on what I'm seeing here. I mean, Mark could probably kill me if I said they're not taking the cap, but I hope they are. MG have put the pressure on all teams to take the cap. There's certainly no marquees in there, is there? And the financial restraints on Cass, you know, like everyone else, they all borrowed the money from the government. They've all started paying that back. Yeah. The, 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 the crowds, you know, the, 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 the probably crowds from 18, 19, I don't know what the averages are, but I would have said last year they probably dropped a lot. When you get in the Challenge Cup, you know, at one time they were guaranteed semi final, final, grand final, semi final, final. I think Mark said the year that they got to the grand final, and again, don't quote me on this because I don't want tax man getting them, but I think they, 
the profits that year were absolutely kept to win for five years. Right. So without them little bit of a runs, like in football, if you don't get a good FA Cup run, it's like absolutely distraught. When we used to do non-league football, you're distraught if you don't get a good draw. And so I think the pressure's on at Cass. I think it's the hardest job, if not. I think it's harder than London, to be honest, because I have a feeling Cass, we're, we're surmising that the Cass fans are saying, yeah, I don't know. I've actually went there against London. And I feel that some Cass fans, I'm not. I'm, I'm trying to be honest here, might say we'll finish halfway. I know when you sit with Mark, and Mark's the CEO, Mark's quite you know optimistic, and mm. Mark's like, oh, you know, we're broke. And I'm thinking, you know, without being brutally honest, you know, I think it, I think they'll finish above London, and I think anybody else to take out above that is an absolute. I think Craig and Danny would absolutely have done the right job. That's where I am. I'm sitting my hands yeah. on it. If they, if they finish above London and beat anybody else, it's an absolute fantastic season. That's where I am with it. I, I, I think, wow, you know, we, we, we watched London. Did you, you didn't go to the gym, did you? No. And we shouldn't judge on pre-season games, but it was it was ultimately, unless you're mad, Huddersfield went and pumped London by 50. Cass and London, there were, no, there were nothing between it. Cass started off great. London were absolutely, started throwing the ball about and it become a, Last half an hour, fantastic game, but it were even Stephen. Cass have got a few more than London to come back in and, and, and a bit of, you know, but it, it what quite strong squads. Anybody, guys, is there anybody you think we've got, uh, anybody out who we think will be a massive loss? If you look at your outs list, are they going to miss Kenny Edwards? I don't, I don't think Kenny, did he say justice for two or three years with there, and especially with the money he'd have been on. Um, Nathan Massey's been a stalwart, uh, but probably coming to that end where you're thinking Massey probably, you know, done the right thing. Greg Eden, thoughts? <clears throat> I don't I wouldn't I don't know if I'd call him a cast legend, but he's been there many years and he had some great moments. Stood up at times when they were faltering. Greg I remember Greg playing half back, I remember him playing centre, he's probably covered full most back. full back well obviously full back, but I mean it, the positions he's covered as well. Played it after, if you yeah, the positions he's covered for the cast team, I think he'll be highly revered. Whether he's still at that level, different question, isn't it? But is he a great player for the club and the, and being around there and remembering that history, yeah, but I don't yeah. Gaz with him, lads, he, he, he never worked for Gaz, did it in Cass it would never no. I mean, uh, that's what I was going to say. I think the only the only names you'd look at on the outs list would be a couple of those younger players that we believed could have added to him this year. You know, if you let, take take Alex Suckley for example, someone of that age who's still got an awful lot of improvement to do. They're, they'd be the ones I think as a cast fan you'd be thinking, well, why have we let them go to replace him with uh, another? maybe less well-known younger player the actual senior players have gone without being too brutal you know based on last year and, and even the year before at times I don't think anyone would be devastated because yeah. like you say Widdop I imagine was taking up a, a reasonable amount of money and Kenny, and, and, yeah, Kenny, and and Kenny as well the one the one that I think is a bit interesting is obviously Greg Eden's ended up at Halifax so he's not gone for a fortune it would be Greg Eden is still a try scoring machine yes he's probably lost a, a yard of pace since he were top scorer in the whole of the league a handful of years ago but why do you think he would have left Cass to go somewhere for no more money why, why wouldn't they be keen to keep someone like that it's easy I think he's Greg would have been on let's say he's on been an average of 80 90 grand mm. whatever so Greg would have had to go in and say knowing I, don't know, I shouldn't say knowing Cass but he'd have had to say 30 25 grand now you might say and he didn't get that Halifax, or he has got that Halifax. And I said that, but then Greg can work alongside that 30, 40,000, make that back up. And I said that would be the main reason. The, I mean, the, the, one, that, the, the one that they the, think the, is Elliot Wallace had a fantastic end to yeah. yeah. Nile levels again, I don't think Nile worked. You know, did he play? Well, he's, like, he's just not played years, yeah, years, you know? so, so you're thinking, you know, Elliot were a, were a real. And I'm. If we look at the ins, guys, I've got. Innis Senior is down has been the, 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 the I think Innis will be an unbelievable th signing for Cass. We put him in there, so I'm biased. But I know the the money he's costing money ball way. I know what it I thought on the other day he was the best player on pitch. I thought right. him and Gary Gaddy were two standouts for Cass uh, against London. He's put about three kilos on. So you know you're looking at 105 kg, he's played 60, 70 Super League games. 
He's got 10 GPS per pace. He's, he's, he's a lot stronger. His reads are better. I think Cass have got a fantastic, a fantastic one in that. Along with the effort of Sam Wood, and, and whether, you, whether you're big on Sam, whether you're not on him, whatever, Sam's effort levels and, and in what he brings. I, I never heard no one at LKR all love Sam. He, he was probably one of the most popular people within the squad. Cass are going to need that because you'll go away to. Yeah. Wigan Saints, you know, on the bounce, you might get Dick 40, 50 coming back and you don't think you need a lot of Sam Woods to say, hey, come on, lads, let's wrap this up and get back together. So I think that's a fantastic squad squad signing as well. Uh, Louis Johnson coming at the end. Uh, uh, Louis got a one-year deal. He's got it all to prove. He worked his socks off pre-season to gain the contract. He did it the hard way. Um, but for me, the standout would be Rowan. And if they can keep Rowan fit which I'm saying that as though he's had loads of injuries, but he's, he's, you know, he's out for that back row. I mean, back row, took about three or four of them out of London, didn't he? I've never seen all that. George Griffin, he Rowan. Took, he, just laid, he was just laying people out, I was like. Emmanuel Wayne. Oh, they had to take him off. It, 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 yeah. it, honestly, it, they took him off because I think there were no, I think they've said there's no one left. It, every time he got dropped under, he just put... He was live under the World Cup though, wasn't what he? It? Do you remember? Yeah, he was steamrolling people, well, if I remember it, rightly. It, it was unbelievable. I, I, I mean, London under well to keep him. I, I know after the game, I actually made a comment and they said, what would you do? I said, he wouldn't have left the gate. You know, if you, if you cast you know, or anybody, he'd have said, wow. So, but I think Rowan's tempo and the tempo he plays at let Milky run. Yeah. I think that'd be for me he's a field position half back, which means he'll just nice and steadily put you where you want to be. If you look deep into rugby lads, I think Cass are gonna have to be field position's gonna be essential because if you can put people in corners and then you can defend that with fast, you know, line speed and get into them and, and keep it there, that's got that's got to happen. Because if they don't get that right and they start throwing it about, there'll be some big scores this year. Mm. If Cass are going to have to play a brand of rugby, which is probably, and I'm not, not saying this, not Pauli esque I can't see you coming out of your own 20 metres and throwing ball to Shenny to Zap and coming out with Greg Eden. And you're not going to, you know, I don't think that's going to be it. I think they're going to have to grind and work and work and work for each other and get close as a squad. Because they're going to, I keep thinking you're going to be coming home on that journey. They've got enough characters in there, hopefully, with your McShane's, your Westermans, what's he? You know, you're hoping that they're the ones who say, listen, lads, let's all be, let's connect. You've got to have to keep together. Yeah. I don't yeah. think they can have one ego in that changing room this year. I think anybody with ego, you're going to say, go, because we're going to be in this together and we could shock a few. And even what we're saying now, they might come back to us in 12 and say, Fuck. by the way, we'd be so happy if you did. Mm. We're a massive fan of Cass, we're a massive fan of the club, they treat us with utmost respect. And I'd like to think that, like you say about ego, but it is much attitude, isn't it? Because it's going to be a tough year, even if it goes well, it's still going to be tough. Oof. So they need to, and, and, and without drifting aside, I do think that's what L London will have. You know, London are, are very much massive favourites to come bottom. But I, I don't think there'll be any issues there in terms of team morale, working hard for each other, because they're constantly massive underdogs in every game. Of course. You need some of those senior players at cast to not not put the queue on the rack halfway through the year, which happened at Wakey last year, I thought. A lot of people started to pack in, and it was only at the end they got a little bit of Lisa life back, and it looked like they were trying again. So, that, like I said, that's so important for them. And they play Wigan first game at home, so... Well, the Paris field this week, and I know, I know this will. Danny was here yesterday, and he, he's, you know, this is it. They're going to. They're, they're going to go full speed. Yeah. They're going to have to go. And they're yeah. going to see where they see are, them, and so yeah. if, you know, hopefully they get. You see where they are. So listen, we'll do the positions at the end, guys. But uh, it's going to be a challenging year. Yeah, if you're a Cast fan, let's get behind them. Let's get behind them. Get to that. You know, Sweet Caroline needs to be pounding out, and you're going to need everything you've. Got, I know they've got a recruitment meeting actually on Tuesday. I think they're trying to bring a couple more in this year, so that's a bit of exciting news for you. Right. Uh, Catalan Dragons, guys. Inns, Chris, Chris Sate, Theo Farge, Tariq Sims, Jaden Nicorima, Bailey Surinam, Jordan Abdul, season long out, Sam Tompkins, Adam Kieran, Tiaki Chan, both to Wigan, it says here, Mikhail Goudimon. Tyrone May. God, it's testing me, guys. Here, see it. See it. There you go. I 
that's why Joe went private school and I went <laughs> to kicked out at 15. And Mitchell Pierce, Matt Whiteley. Um, first thing that sticks out, lads, here. I, I like the signings. I, I, I thought Sate were just brutal. I know he's. They can get keep him fit and keep him. But the world of the sun's out. The, yeah. You know, it's everything right for the lads to it. You know, he, this is no disrespect to all at all. But you know what I mean? He's, he's got flip flops on. They'll be sat there. They'll be happy. You know, you, you keep you keep the island lads happy in the round. You've got a right chance. This, this, this. I think that's a fantastic signing. Um, Theo. I mean, it, it, but he's back home. He's fantastic. Well, it's fantastic. The same stuff. What he didn't say to that kid deserves every accolade. I suppose it just didn't work out. No. And, and we know, reportedly, the, when they were on money wise, people were saying, oh my God, you know, this yeah. is the paid overs for him. And it didn't work out for him. Let's hope Theo was there, like he said, he's back home. He can go and. Yeah, uh, Tariq Sims. Uh, How old's Tariq Sims now? Because he's been he's been brilliant, hasn't he? Probably 32, he, 33, he, I'd say. I was going to say, I didn't know if he was that much. Listen, Catalans do sat, don't, they're not bothered about signing anybody 30 plus. Historically, for the last 10 years, that's what they've gone for. Yeah. Yeah. When, and, and, when they signed Joel Tonkin, Sam Tompkins, Mickey Mackey, we're all 31, yeah. 32. Well, I'm going to say, you, you both watch more NRL than me, but to my understanding, from what I've seen, he's still a top NRL player, isn't mm. he? He's not. He's not been three years doing that. I feel it's that he's been even the last couple of years. He's been a top player, hasn't he? He's the he's the real deal as far as the Sims brothers go, isn't he? He's yeah, he's one. good, isn't he? I don't know if he's he's thirty three now. Like mm. last year, certainly quieter than he was before. But mm. you're talking someone that, like you said, was a top prop in the league a couple of years yeah. ago. I don't yeah, know if he's. Ago, I don't it. know if he's that top anymore. But he's for Super League standards, he should still be. He should still be there for a year or two. Something. I'm, ch I'm challenging the uh, the halfback. Scares me looking down here, guys. I mean, you've got Jordan Abdul going in, and he's got it all to prove after obviously being told at KR that you know probably number three for this season. As soon as KR went for May, and Mikey got in the England squad, I bet you Jordan were thinking, oh no, oh no, oh no. So Jordan on his day is probably the ultimate. Uh, Probably the biggest maverick in our game who can play, and is, is the the last time I've seen it is Danny Bruff. When yeah, he looked at Danny yeah. in his pommy, came to Leeds, or he went to Cass, or Danny could rip you apart on his own. Job done, and you're trying to work out. I think Jordan's got that capability, even though we only get it sporadic. You know, it's not yeah. consistent because of his injuries over a season. KR are raving about mate. Some of the players at KR yeah. said, "Mate, this kid is the real deal." I know. Last year, we, me and Joe went to watch him at all. We couldn't believe how big he was, and athletic. he looked like a centre playing half. And every time he got ball, he just run with it. And he, well, he is a centre playing half. There you go. <laughs> um. <laughs> what? What? I was, I was giving strength to your you point. Know? He was a so. Centre. So he's, he's 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 obviously. So I think the big miss is does Jordan does it fall on Jordan and Theo to get Catalans, and he's, can that two replace Mitchell Pierce and May? Because I've got May and I've got May and Pierce a lot above. All oh, right, I don't know. There you go. No, I don't think There's a combination. I, uh, I mean, I I was quite quick to write. Um, no, so I've got that Nick Arimas will be the, probably the starting halfback. There you go. Ah, Joe, well done. Great point. I got that wrong. That's searched, a great point. I was just searching that up there just to make sure I'm not. Out, right, so you've got oh, that's good then, isn't it? You've got two, and then you've got Nick Kareem. Yeah. Where's he come from, Joe? Tell us a little bit about him. Yeah, let me just load him up here. Jaden Nick Kareem, he's 27 years old. He uh, played last for the Melbourne Storm. Only played two games over the last two years for Storm. Was at Roosters. Um, like I said, just someone who's playing. No, well, you've got him above Jordan and um, Theo. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, I think so. He might play. I think so. Yeah, I don't want to. I think he said it, and he's realised as he's looked at his stats, and then he's <laughs> just absolutely shrunk into his own boots. And he's uh, go on then, commit yourself. I'll have a private bet with you that he's number three, and other two are one and two. Is Abdul fit? Yep. Injury free, I should. Yeah. Say. I'm gonna say fits for you. I think no. I think I think he. I think he, <laughs> Nikarima starts. I think Nikarima. I already starts. know that you, but you let you. Uh, what's it called on Insta when you see guy just disappear into bushes? Oh, <laughs> oh, 
all I was going to say well last year I thought we had quite a big turnover and we got a struggle last year and we didn't at all so you've just got to think that they're, they're so good at having a, a reasonable turnover but replacing like for like or certainly quality for quality so I'd, I'd I'm not doubting him at all this year. I, well, I've got him. I've got him up, yeah. but I think I think Tomkins, Tomkins, with the two last year, Tomkins with, come on, Craig, with uh, Mitchell, Mitchell Pierce and May was for me. Me, my when I watched them live, was the best three ball combination. I'm not saying they had the uppers, but I can't call it a four ball. But the two arse and Tomkins was absolutely outstanding that day at all. Tomkins just talked everyone through the game and them two were absolutely sublime. Yeah. I don't and they know really if told... Mitchell Pierce had a, had a that good a year, personally. Well, they, they wanted him back for NRL, they wanted one more gig, and he, he did have a good year, you know. He... No? Well, I don't Catalan know. Catalan fans, if you get a chance, give us a little bit of <laughs> comments on that one. I think you. I the believe. first one is who will, who will start, Steve Mack, or will Steve Mack start? The second one is Jimmy Mack saying that... Uh, <laughs> I didn't think he lit it up, put it that way. I thought he was on old Mitchell likes. Pierce lit it up. I thought he had a great season. Uh, I think we'll all agree, lads. Catalans will be there and there. Travelling to Catalans, having to play yeah. them games. And I think they say now, because of whatever reason, they've got to stay there when they go. I'll, 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 Mick might know more of that, but there's a new rule that they've got to go and spend a couple of days. I don't know if it's because of the TV deal. I'm sure. Well, I'm sure Gladwell yeah. will know. That Bailey Sivenden is also a very. A very Highly rated prospect as well. What position? Oh, there you go. Highly rated, rated prospect. I, do, I just don't want to get it wrong. It's more not doing. I, think Matt, I, think, the, Matt Whit I think Matt Whitley was their most consistent money baller player, and I think he will yeah, be the biggest. Yeah, he's a second rower. He's a smooth he's forward slash second rower. Well, I thought Matt Whitley's been unbelievable. Yeah. Twenty-seven. He's, he's he's played fifty-seven games for the Warriors. He's been he's been a consistent NRL star starter for mm. quite a few years now. I yeah. certainly don't think there'll be any weaker. And last year I thought they'd be fighting for playoffs and be absolutely crew. So I don't see how they won't be top three again. But you know, yeah, because they both signings sound really positive. I've not got them top three, but I, I don't think they can match for last year. But yeah, but there we go, guys. So you know, next one, guys, we've got. Huddersfield Giants, wow, this will be interesting. We've got Inns, Thomas Deakin, Adam Swift, Andre Savalio, Elliot Wallace, Hugo Salabio, Joe, tell me if I'm right, Jack Murchie, Adam Kloon. Out, Jack Asper, Theo Farge, Will Price, Josh Jones, Adam O'Brien, Jamel McGreeve, Hilvery, McGreeve, you'll kill me for that, Chris McQueen, Nathan Peach, George Roby, Nathan Mason, Owen Trout, in his senior, Aidan McGowan, season long loan. Just off the top of my tongue there, guys, immediately. Mm. The outs, are, you know what? It, it's, it's, I'm going I'm to start with the outs on this. Yeah. There's some big names there, isn't there? You look at that. You, you, See, look. I think the opposite. I think... I think Will Price. He, 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 I, I, I wouldn't be bothered as a... After what happened last year... I don't think I'd be too concerned. The only one that stands out to me who I think has been an, an absolutely brilliant signing is, is retired, hasn't he? Chris McQueen. He's been superb, but everyone else on there, compared to who they brought in, I'd, knowing that something had to change, if something wasn't right last year, they were expected to be very, very high up the table and it was atrocious. So I, I, I don't, I'd be interested to know what others feel fans think. Well, I... I I think losing Will Price after losing Dom Young at such an early age, it's, tra it's, it's tragic. This is why you I think people yeah. know that's going to happen. And he's, it's, and it's he's off to NRL, isn't he? I think that's sadly... That's personally good, but not for the club. Would it's not you personally... Would no, be clapping no, him off? No, no, no. Let me speak. Yeah, what, it is, what it is good for is that, sadly, I don't think we can stop that much anymore. We've, been out, we've done shows last year, the year before, where we said... Sadly, if they're paying the money they are, there's not much stopping that, especially that every single young player you speak to dream is to play in the NRL now. It's not to star in Super, there's very little players who go, I want to be a Super League star, they all go NRL. I think that's a tough one. They've done what they can and replaced him, George Flanagan uh, Jr. They've, took, they've gone and bought another young fullback to try and replace the excitement Will Price had 
whether that will work out or not. Obviously, like you said, it's a different question, but it's. A t- I think the at least he's not gone to say to Leeds. I think I know that's a cop out, but I'm, I'm at least he's not gone to yeah, another right, top yeah. Super League club, and he's actually gone to the NRL because. I don't think there's any stopping that nowadays, and that's no. a sad reality of rugby league at the moment. Well, I'm uh, I'm a little bit disappointed because I think losing Will Owen Trout and any senior Trout is disappointing. I don't know why you'd I don't know why you'd have an academy get people like that through it, and then you've lost one to NRL and two to two to other clubs. Uh, the salary cap issues involved. Yeah, in uh, well, like we did Trout and senior, you know, Innis were just told surplus and that Owen, I think, you know, they made an offer. Uh, but it wasn't the offer that he could get elsewhere. Yeah. I don't think he ever felt fully ingrained in the squad. He always thought, mm. as with Innis, that you know, maybe Watto didn't fancy him enough. Or I think they always thought they didn't see the same regular playing, so there was always that bit of doubt. But I think for a club like Huddersfield to lose three like that off the off the uh, off the youth system, mm. uh, it'd be very very disappointing for me. Uh, I'd, be, I'd, I'd be devastated with that. Gail is raving about Jermaine in training at yeah. Wakey. He says, Craig, you, I cannot believe, you know, he, I think he got three, didn't he, last week against Wigan, or two against Wigan? Yeah, three. The three. He, 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 he says, mate, it's just so that, you know. Mm. Maybe Jermaine, we all heard that Jermaine was the most popular man in the changing rooms. He was the one who maybe a lot of the players looked to. Yeah. Maybe Watto thought, I need to remove that and let these guys build yeah. a, a, a squad without Jermaine having the, you know, and it's... Roy Keane answered it best when they said, oh, did you have the change rooms? He went, yeah, but I did when we're winning. You can't just say it didn't work when I won't, you know, at end. He said, of course I did. I'm captain of the club. I want most, you know, longest serving. I were there. I, I did it. I control 100%. That I think Jermaine did. I, I've had years and everyone said, they all speak so highly of him. Mm. The, the one for me is what all, this is what all years, guys. It, it's, if yeah. he doesn't, if what all doesn't get top four playoff challenge cup final, I think he'll shake hands. It won't be a sacking. I think it'll just be, you know, both have tried it, it's exhausted it, the cap's exhausted it. Uh, will Watto's, Watto come with the biggest reputation I've ever seen of a coach uh, after Salford. He, he was the he was, he was the one that Hull wanted, he was talked about with Warrington, he was talked about England coach, yeah. he was talked, he, t- he talked to Hull, report, reputedly talked to Hull and they, the, 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 I think the fee, the, his salary was massive, you know, so Watto, massive for Watto, himself and his staff, because if Otto gets this wrong, do you think he'll get the year? If they lose far yes, out of the first I think six, Rich is the most loyal. It sounds like they're very. Rich is the most loyal. You know, to Ken and Rich it, yeah. and the set up are very loyal. They're not a sacking club. They really, they try and give him every possible thing. Rich, how many times I've said to Rich, "It's I made to do what my coach wants," and there'll never be a coach leave here and said I made a call on players. I haven't, and I'll, and I'll stick with Rich. A lot of people think he don't. He doesn't get the calls. Does he make the calls on what they get money-wise? Yes. But he definitely doesn't make the call on the player coming in or out. That's that's He's always left that to the coaches. <sighs> I'm I'm a mixed bag, guys. I'm just a mixed bag with it. I, I'm looking at Elliot Wallace. Could be anything. El, El's that type of player who could be sensational. Savelio, same with him. Uh, Andre, on yeah. his day. Jordan Abdelish, you know, we can change a game, can do anything. Yeah. But consistently... My biggest thing for him, I think this year I'm going to pick a player out who I think could play for England at the end of this year. It, again, I sound like a, an old record because he's obviously one of my... Oliver Wilson, for me, is the premier next one up. He's the next one up to get in the England squad. Uh, I talked to a coach very highly rated the other day and he said to me, you know, he's the one he's looking forward to seeing. He's 24 now. And he's saying, can he make that breakthrough to, 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 to be a top dream team prop? Ollie, Ollie went with the only young lad when he went there, we're 19, 20 year old, he was thrust straight in and out, in and out, him and Matty. when they got called the Gordon Bears, what were it? Matt, you remember the Golden famous Bears, by English, Matty they got told, yeah, yeah, the Polar Bears Polar. and all that, and then... But Ollie, Ollie, for those who don't know, Ollie was probably the highest rated prop of his age group, wasn't he? 100%, and he come from nowhere, you know, he and, came and from... And you'd say Matty's arguably had a couple of years where yeah. he, he surpassed him, yeah. but we know it's coming with Ollie at some point. I think so. I think if Ollie dominates and he can say, I want to I want to run this pack now, I think Ollie is a challenge he needs to set to the pack. You know, I'm not a kid no more. I, I'm win for the top. And, and I think if he can challenge his centre, play longer minutes, longer minutes, you, you'll see the emergence of, a, of, a, of, a, of an international prop. That's my tip. I mean, I think most eyes are on Adam Klumbo, aren't they? 
to, he's coming over as one of the biggest NRL signings of the year, isn't it? So, is 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 you think the you think they've got the uh, think they paid the big money? Yeah, is he marquee? I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, I mean, nice. Well, then tell tell people a bit about him, guys. Well, uh, Joe probably knows more than me. I just know that you know that he's a big name who's still again wasn't necessarily coming to the end of his career like some get criticised did he play in the playoffs last year for Newcastle well, I didn't I don't know no, right no. guys help us out again we should have done a bit of homework on that but he, he, <laughs> is, is he please in your comments tell us what you think of Adam Clune I, I'm what I know was him and I watched throughout the season I didn't I can't I think Adam Swift's the best I think Adam Swift by far is the best no player. you can't there's, there's like you said there's Clune there there's the, the, they've gone Australia they've gone that Thomas Deakin he was highly rated as a youth as a youngster so you've got Clune Deakin and Murchie there they've spent big Swift's been the best player best winger for me top four in comp last two years yeah but you've got to look I at I just think I he's think light for light with McGilvery I'd rather have Swift myself because I think he's got more left in him and he's a try scoring machine but I don't think that's going to change him loads, whereas in theory, I think this the, the Af- I think the Huddersfield issue is that they've got some of their overseas signings wrong, haven't they, in the last couple of years? Well, apart certainly from, Uate and a few others, yeah, you've got to apart from Chris McQueen, shock, I'm, Yeah, apart from Chris McQueen what best signing? and the hooker who left after the year, what was his name again? They, they were awesome, weren't they, for that one yeah. year? Apart from them two, they've got a lot of them wrong, I think. For me, it's, you've got to get them Aussie signs, right? Because that's where the m- big money is invested, sadly. Or oh, it is nowadays. They're, they're, they'll be the big money signings, but along with Swifty, to be fair. But can can they get them right? Because I think you know what Swifty is. He's a great player, an awesome winger. Like you said, like for like with McGilvery, got more certainly more speed than McGilvery at this point. Ah, challenging you there. McGilvery has still got the carry, still got loads Jermaine, of strength. Come on, son. But Swifty, Swifty, Swift. Top end, you mean? Yeah, and he's where the where the Mozzies, a lot of them are unknown. Clooney's not made it in Newcastle. He's been in and out of the team at Newcastle Knights for years. Was meant All to right. be good. Oh yeah. No. I, I thought he was a high. I thought he was like a premium. Oh, no, 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 no! I didn't no. mean to give you that support, Jim. I'll take that back from earlier. But he's been in and out of Newcastle now. They've been trying to get him to be that. At times, he has been that, but he's not been consistent enough. Um, can they can they get that right? That Jack Murchie, a bit unknown. You're hearing some mixed things about uh, some good things. Sorry about him, but still a bit f- more unknown than Adam Clune. And then that Thomas Deakin, that the Roosters youngster that they brought in. Again, if, there's, if they're at Huddersfield, they've not quite made it in NRL, have they? That's the honest truth. But is, are they good enough to do a, a Brody and one of these others that go and Ooh. kill it? Um, I, that's got to be the big... That's got to be Huddersfield's thing they get. They didn't get it right in the arse I've got last top six, guys, when we get to it. I've got, yeah. I've got Huddersfield. I think, what told, I think this is... I think he knows the stakes are high. The staff know the stakes are high. I think the players they brought in are, are like... I, I, I actually think he'll do it. I think this is the year that we'll get top six. I think. I just think we the pack, Matty, like you said, Ollie, they're, they're not youngins no more. There's no, there's none of that rubbish. You know, they've got to go and perform. Mm. I think they relied on the the up has been a problem from apart from like you said, a lad who came over and had that outstanding season. Then it, you know, reluctantly they lost him. Uh, Adam O'Brien's been a stalwart for them for five or six years. I think if they can get the the backfield, Swifty and Elliot are both. Big carriers, big aggressive carriers. I think if they can get that right, that back five, it's something I don't think Huddersfield have ever been brilliant at. I think if you, I don't, your stats might tell us, but I don't think Jermaine were probably best yardage man. But the no, other side, mean. the other side, uh, I don't think they ever got that right. But, but I think they changed the winger at the other side about nine times. Uh, young lad got in at the end of last year, didn't he, from Wigan? Um, they've, they've signed him on a thing but he ended yeah, up playing yeah, is yeah. it Alsall or um, Alsall Sam Alsall Sam Alsall so I think if they can get that back five centres centres to win the yardage I think they had um, Ricky Latelli didn't they want, you know Ricky Latelli but he's not a yardage man he had the top skills in, in the thing but I think it's become a speed this year guys with the new rules and we've all got to get this right the new rules are coming in the, sorry it's year after this they're saying everything will be in but we've been to a few games, the referee's blowing, you know, and they're going to be on it. Anything above here, anything this, slowing the rook, you know, all this can happen. I think you've got to be, Michael Owen said about football, the day what makes a football, and he says, well, as long as you've got a good touch in your feet, you've got a chance of being a football. 
I think rugby's we're going to go that way. I think the, the fitness levels, the speed, and I think if Huddersfield can get that back five to get 750, 700 metres a game, which I bet you, if we get the stats that historically they've never achieved, apart from Jermaine whacking off uh, big me. It's been interesting with Ashton Golden. I have no idea. As soon as they where will Ashton play, I'm like, I don't know. I think he plays a backup hooker now, doesn't he? Is well, on wing. He played, I think he played 12 on wing. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, Ashton, he's a, Ashton's a good yardage man, to be fair. They've got, you know, he's a, his, his effort levels are massive out, but defensively he's very good. Uh, I think they've got half a chance. So do you think, uh, with, with Pricey going, is, uh, are we expecting Lola here and Clune to be the halves and, and Jake at fullback? Is that what we think? Yeah, going to be? Ollie Russell's been, uh, I think he's... Yeah, been, because he's been touted out. At touted out, Lanky, yeah. Isn't he? But, because I think last year, they had a lot of problems in the halves, didn't they? There was injuries and he was having to mm. move around and he kind of, that was his Watto's excuse for weeks and weeks and weeks, wasn't yeah. it? Until he ended up saying, oh, now I've got Ollie Russell back. And yeah. they're almost like, well, this is the best interview you've ever seen. I don't seen. think there's any hiding in place this year. I just think this is yeah. it, guys. This but they might it. have that bit more stability in the spine yeah. if injuries don't yeah. come. Yeah, agreed. But I think and they've, they've got, got, I think yeah. if you're a field fan, I think, you, I, think you'll, I think they'll grind some wins. After Sunday, you'll know everything. Because if they put 40 on Cass, or there's a, you know, if they put a score on Cass, like they did London, then you're going to go, I think then you'd look and go, I don't wow. No, I don't think that's when you learn about Huddersfield, though. It's, oh, when yeah. play, it's when they play the teams around him, isn't it? You know, with respect to Cass. The one they expect to beat, you think the you would think the ones they expect to beat, they do when the better team. If in a, in a pre season friendly, albeit if both teams are strong. Strong, the full out. I yeah, spoke to you, you can obviously read more into that than most friendlies. But, but we'll get to same, see all the new signings play together. Yeah. We'll get to see if there's any gel. I, we'll get to see. I always think you need to wait wait a good few weeks till teams have gelled, especially new teams. Are you saying that as your leads head on? Because you stuck up for leads on a WhatsApp you know, the other day. Getting excited about friendlies. You were paranoid starts. about leads. Somebody put something about leads and that didn't start and you were like. I just think when you read too much into friendlies when they're making so many changes and playing players out of positions, you can only get a certain amount. I think after a few weeks, when when they're playing teams who are going to be in and around them in the table, that's when you learn. Yeah, I totally disagree. I know you do, and we'll disagree. I agree forever. with Jimmy there. I, I think how when, many teams have when we I seen Tull KR last year it's because the vibe was unbelievable when Daly when you took Wake to not being a relegation battle <laughs> yeah. last year that <laughs> was because because, because you, you said, said because vibe. of their pre-season the friendly isn't it so, so the vibe at KR was fantastic and it, and it worked you can't out. pick and choose teams that you said the vibe would Gailey, be well, Gailey rang me in <laughs> Gailey rang me in 17 and they beat Wake in a pre-season friendly by 40 and he said to me we'll win it he thought they'd win it we still to me they didn't but he, he said everything's right and he said the attitude in pre-season is right I think it goes a long way I think what you've seen so far and I know with players you'll know if you've got a duff already let me tell you my friend if you pay 200 grand for another season you wait lads round you and they go he's a duff mate we already know because I know that happens probably 25 times a year lads in pre-season will look and go oh no oh they know it because one, they're doing bleep tests every two days, they're looking at his character, they've, put, they've gone on the tour for a week, they've looked at what he's like outside of the bubble. The coaches will have a good understanding of what's coming. When we get to the old KR one, straight after that camp and into the friendlies, they've got May as the number one. They've got May as the man. Yeah. All the players, all the staff, Mikey won't like that, you know, Mikey will tell you, but that's, that's what we're coming out, I heard. Even him, every player I talked to were like, mate, this kid is just, an absolute phenomenon. I think I've got this field anyway. Wait till yeah. end. I've got them. I've got them a lot better than I think. I, well, they have to be a lot. I think I did bottom four last year. I don't think I gave them a lot of raps last year. I have to get right. I fancy him a little bit this year. Yeah. Okay. Next one, guys. Hull FC. Joe, you just do the ins because there's it's a couple of names. <laughs> So, Inns, Herman, SSA from the Dolphins. You've got Jaden Ockenbur from Canterbury Bulldogs. Franklin Pele from Canterbury as well. Uh, Jack Walker, Liam Tindall, Jack Ashworth, Morgan Smith, Damel Diakete that they got on from a trial and he's played well. And then New Fam, I'm just going to say New Brown uh, as the Inns. Uh, the outgoings, Chris Satai, Jake Clifford, the big one to North Queensland. Uh, my mate now, Scott Tag Taylor, is uh, retired. 
Um, watch the punt, actually. I'll give the punt a shout out. Uh, Jamie Shaw's retired. Adam Swift to Huddersfield. Uh, Andre Sabellio to Huddersfield. Brad Dwyer. Joe Lovadua. Ben Mack um, to Lee. Connor ben Wayne. Mara. Yeah, Ben Mac, well, Ben McNamara. I think they know who I'm talking about. Connor Wayne, Jude Ferreira, and Mano Wakakoke to Thurston. Thank you. I'll tell you one thing I noticed straight away there. Again, they've lost some good players, guys. Here, you know, the Outwell FC fans here. What do they think? You know, Clifford and Sate certainly stick out like a sore thumb. Yeah. Tag's been a stalwart. Uh, we're big fans of Tag. You know, he's been an absolute stalwart. Adam Swift potentially the top four winger in comp there's four for me lads that they can't that, that, that's wow that's a wow for me Savelio at times has been majest, majestic for him yeah I don't think it, Brad Dwyer worked either way I think I think Brad did great but it, I don't think Tony you know whatever didn't fully happen but that for me that top four or five players wow that's that's <laughs> That's some uh, that's some loss for me. I it think. Is. I wonder how. Just looking at that Swifty, you know, wonder because it's close to home. You know, that a lot of people say that the Lancashire lads struggle. You know, if they move to Hull, and they might have thought Huddersfield. Oh, because I won't. You'd be offering. You'd be offering the kitchen sink, wouldn't you? After two years. I assumed he moved to Hull though, because he's had a few years. Well, it'd, be, it'd be interesting because because I know Sutty and them. Everybody, everybody were like, how good he is, and yeah. how good of a kid he is, and how he trains hard, and he does this. And, that there, there's some, there's some big losses there. Do you, I mean, James I mean, Clifford, you can't help. Maybe no. Saturday. I don't know if it's a financial thing or he decided he wanted to do, try out the uh, south of France. The south of France. But that's uh, oof, guys. I mean, it's, again, I, I don't know much that's about shocking. these. That's I have realised that. But I don't know about these Aussie signings who've come in, so I'm no use with this one again because I, I don't know what sort of quality they're bringing in. And, and, and ultimately, they're not proven in Super League, have they? The James gets, I give him his Joe Jimmy, uh, and he has something to do with this, I'm sure. Jimmy gets a lot of these right. You know, you sat when they bring him over, mm. Clifford last year, um, yeah. they do get a lot of this right. So I'm actually optimistic. Yeah, and you imagine Tony Smith's got very good contacts yes. as well. So well, well, no, when, we, when Tony's not been there, if you look at their back five and others, they were all over, they're overseas, Carlos. They've always got it absolutely spot on, to be honest with you. Apart from like all of us, a few duffs, but they do yeah. get it quite good. So I think that'll be exciting. I just don't like the loss of. Well, the provens aren't they as well? You know, that's probably like say Clifford would probably had no control well, over. But I think for the ins, I'll start with the ins. Jade Nockumbo has had some off-field stuff. Whether that could, hopefully it doesn't come up again, but was he a great player? I really liked him. I really yeah. liked him in NRL. I thought he was a consistent starter for Canterbury. Had some brilliant Both games. Both of these cup for four years on top. Yeah, but uh, who's that? Brodie Croft from Man of Steel and they couldn't wait to get rid of two okay. teams have chucked him out. I don't Good think point. that matters as much in Super League, but was a great... I, I really liked him as a player anyway. Franklin Pele, I don't think started much, but... Does he, are, they, are the team raving about him as this big powerhouse of a lad who's actually a monster, 420 kg pretty fit? Mm -hmm. Yes, they yeah. are saying that. And then the one, I'm going to use your point from earlier, the one who the, I've heard them rave about is that New Brown. Yeah, they're me speak, too. They're speaking very highly about New Brown, which is probably what they need because Clifford was probably top three or four halves in the game, single-handedly kept them in any form of a season last year when they could have really had a bad one I think he just kept them steady uh, New Brown probably have to do that again Jack Walker guys for me is the is the is the is the is the signing if he Jack if Jack's on fire they've got the best you know one of the best fullbacks OKR fans when they actually watched him in full that playoff sack I remember a few fans were saying oh what you know and then if you remember, actually, they brought a French fullback in, didn't they? He got dropped for that one. Oh, game. damn. That's the. Uh, that's and he'll want to work. I mean, I'm not going to say it was no, not for me to. Oh, they did. You're mixing it up with all KR? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, sorry. You're saying so what last year, and then at the end of the season, the all KR fans were devastated. They loved Jack. They yeah. had shown them what he could do. Mm. Jack's got to be not injured, consistently high level for these to have any chance of making this eight. Like, that's how much I've got this. He, I think Jack, and I don't want to put too much pressure on him, but I, I do, I think he has to stay fit for probably 20 plus, 22, 23 games, because he, I think he's that essential to what they'll do. 
Um, when you say eight, do you mean six? I'm not listening to my mic. It's top, yeah, I've top got, six. Well, I'm going to, I, I've got to mean eight. I think we're looking to get in eight. Oh, all right. But for playoffs, it's still six. Yeah, yeah. But right. I'm just saying right. the top. Okay. I, I think the thing with Wolf FC... Oh, sorry, go on. No, no, and, and <coughs> Tyndall will be best signing money ball a year. I think he's right, well, that's a levels. massive call. Yeah, I think Leeds yeah. have Leeds didn't want to lose him. He's picked you know. up a knock, hasn't he already? Right, there you go. Joe's just put the uh, <laughs> repro. Sorry, because he was outstanding in the first yeah, game. He they said, uh, and he's trained in the house down. Um, whether he can replace Swifty again, Swifty's a very yeah. high bar for me. But I think Tyndall for what he, for what he's he got, he works so hard, doesn't he, in the yardage and and. and well, Liam's think. got to get his the top end skill right. You know. He, Jermaine, Jermaine and Ryan all in the pond, the best two wingers, could probably do it at both ends. Jermaine could carry, could finish. Mm -hmm. You know, Ryan all could do it at both ends. Liam's got to be able to do it at the other end. We, don't, we all know he can carry out yardage. Yeah. Can he catch a ball at full pace, one-handed, and put it in a, in a corner? Yeah. Can he jump up his head? They're the challenge for Liam. It's not, it's not the effort levels. No. Um, but... I think the thing for me, Hull FC, if you look at the squad, they've actually announced a 40-man squad because I think from about number 23 every single one's a reserve like some uh, sorry a player who's come up from the academy and is essentially would be a reserve they've announced a 40 man squad for a reason they're sending a message to the fans that this year is about youth development great point Joe. and well if done. and if if the I think Hull's happy as long as they don't come in the bottom two or three yeah. and you see two or three superstars emerge. Obviously we saw one at the very last game of last season, Lewis Martin take on Saints and score. I won't say superstar Joe, yeah. It's a big big, big word. State. But you know, you do want to see them want to be superstars. Yeah, it's it's emerge, super emerging super yeah, league players. Want, want to become superstars. Yeah. I, I, I'm gonna back stick by that. Uh you've you saw you've they've got some they've got eight they've got sorry, thirteen or fourteen players in that squad there that are all under the age of 20. Are you determined Sam Burgess is a superstar? Is that the bar? No, megastar. He's the GOAT status. That's... So give me a superstar. Superstar? Adam Swift's, a, in my view, a Super League superstar. So that's it's standard. It's a ridiculous comment. Wait, just that's just how much I like him. You've probably got three or four of us being a superstar in our game. Danny Maguire? I'm talking about currently megastar. I've got. Um, I've obviously wow. got different. Levels. Different. Anyway, different 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 Danny's goat. Danny's I've goat. I've always thought a superstar with a person who's the goat is the superstar. Well, it's just a different no, no, terms, isn't it? If he's, yeah, he's saying he's got you're different terms, you're picking up my wording. So what I mean by superstar. Sam's define a superstar. <laughs> well, you can do it. <laughs> you're being an ass. Just ask him. Move on. Uh, just define a superstar. I'd say elite, but it can be elite like now, present, present. Okay. Joe's got superstar, so, superstar, that, superstar, in, in, <laughs> superstar, in, then, superstar in UFC would be Conor McGregor? No, that's... Or would it be... Yeah, but... A superstar would be, you talk, oh, hey, superstars. Masvidal level, Masvidal was super... Yeah, when they go like... Yeah, well, when they make them jumps and then everyone knows about them. Please, if you've got some comments, All right, that's, I'm, I'm okay, really I've made it clear. what a superstar I think is. most people would say superstar is what you're saying. Oh, so sorry, then, I Joe's apologize. got a few different I put, categories. I put on. a superstar. I a mean, great point. A, a, a great, a great, some great players point. to come. If if Hull finish not in the bottom two or three, you see, you see, I'd say you want, with how many they've got, you'd say two or three, that you go, wow, they're going to play at Hull for the next 10 years and be yeah. great players. I think that's a success. Stars. I think stars, not superstars. <laughs> Listen, stars. we know they've got it. We, want, we, we don't want to, have to blow the trumpet for them, but they have got it. They've yeah. got some unbelievable youngsters yeah. coming through, which is the passion of the club at the moment. And it is your right, Joe. The, the, the club are selling that as a rightly so, rightly so. I think the old fans are going to have to be patient. Me, I think when I've got them this year, yeah, uh, I is think a bit, a little bit like, I'm not saying cast, but you know, because all have got. I bet, I bet you've got 15 different. young kids who could, be, yeah. who could become superstar, who could become, you know, <laughs> emerging <laughs> talents in the game. I think that, I don't think Cass have. I don't think Cass have got that luxury and that excitement coming. Uh, yeah, Joe's, men tough, Joe's yeah. mentioned a few there. They could probably mention seven or eight of them who have got a real chance of becoming. Yeah. I'll I, I have a little one mm. on, on Jack Brown. I think, I think Brownlee's got to do what Oliver Wilson at the same age. And I'm going to challenge Brownlee to say, Brownlee, are you that man? Yeah. Can you show because he, he's always Ramley will ring me and we talk. And it's always game time. It's always him getting dropped or game time. Game time. Game time. Dropped. Game time. So he's never consistently become the player which we all thought Brownie could. The new rules are gonna suit Brownie because it's gonna suit the lower 
leverage a man, you're right, you know, you're going to duck in the old James Donaldson. How are they going to stop Donald now in black? Penalty, 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 because he bends anyway when he carries. So, uh, you know, good luck with that one. But I think it's same as Ollie, he's not, he's not a kid no more. I think if he can lead, a bit like Jordan Lane, I've listened that to Laney as well. I think Laney, yeah, we all thought Laney would have become a superstar. Hey! And he, um, he, 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 I think there's a few there who could carry, you know, that whole thing and let's go. And they, isn't it great to see a kid at 24 and somebody goes back that next step? Mm. We've seen it. We've seen it historically when you go, you know, over the years we've watched a player and you think, is he going to become that player? Is he? And usually, something happens and you go, wow. Yeah. And the maverick of them all, Truey, you know, Truey has got to, a bit like Jack Walker, a fit Truey. There's no. But is it is it going to be spring summer uh, before he's May, back? Oh, May, right. uh, May, well, that's not too it, bad. Yeah, yeah, he's running. He's running. Right. Um, because that's massive. But he's had a terrible run with injuries. Oh, no. And Truey, all are going to have to have a fit Truey. With, Got with, to, especially with, losing Clifford. They needed him last year with Clifford. Never mind now, he, you know, he's red. And seeing Truey come round right back of the play with Jack Walker out back, yes. I, I would think would be the most exciting. I, that's the, the that sight I dreamt, you know, that's the one that you think, wow, Truey mm. taking line, Jackie Trout back. You're thinking, that is exciting. Mm. If you've got runners around that, Liam Sutcliffe, you know, great signing for all. I think him and Swifty for me, what too, when the, when when Sutty were playing with Swifty, that was the edge. That was the edge that kept him in a lot of games, defensively, attacking yeah. wise. Um, mm. Tony, and again, respectfully so. Tony's building something here, but again, a little bit like Watto. Tony will get more time. He's not in his fourth year like Watto. No. Yeah, but well, certainly, yeah. questions are going to be asked about the percentage of wins and losses and what's building. Tony needs to be given time, respectfully so, but uh, historically all fans don't. I know. The boot goes in uh, well and truly. So I would say if they're in the bottom three halfway through the season, you're going to see, you're going to see the fans react and the pressure. I, I were there, I were there when uh, KR beat him in the derby last year. We, if whole KR are where I think they'll be this year. Yeah. The pressure on Hull's even worse. It's a nightmare for them. As when Hull FC was successful, Hull KR wasn't. That's the biggest kick in the... You know what? That, well, it, it doesn't matter where you, it matters where you finish. But I'd say, if you said to Hull fans, what's the most important thing that's beat them? Yeah. They both say it. I've been around it. <laughs> yeah. it's, well, it's, it's every everything. Derby, isn't it? So your problem right. is, is when you are like Wakey, Castle like this, you ready? And Wakey are coming. And them fans who were sat there, and the cast have had 15 years on them. With the best, what's it like, you know? That's coming, that's coming, the juggernaut. Hull KR okay, juggernauts come, yeah. and it's gone past all FC, yeah, yeah. who have been the daddy, they've been the boys. Yeah. And the, yeah. for 10 I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, I've never heard you say <laughs> The daddy. <laughs> He used to say about the fighting, didn't he? He'd say he's the, he's the daddy of them all. So you'd look at that and you'd yeah. go, and I'm scared that the pressure that they will be under because of KR yeah. and because of the whole, yeah. I think that's going to have a massive effect on players and the coaching because every time you go back down my way on a Sunday and you've got beat to all FC, you're going to pub and you see pub this 25 red and white <laughs> yeah. and they're going like this, and you're going, and you're sat there as sick as a Blackpool donkey. You are absolutely. And you imagine that over a period of two or three, four. And all of a sudden, KR at a Challenge Cup final again. All KR all get knocked out of the quarters. That pressure pool then goes on to players because the fans will transfer that. Do you get me? I get you. And I, but it's like what we were saying about Cass. It, it's, this is where you hope that the, the fans are understanding. I, I just thought I'd check the odds to see so Hull FC are for, where's that from so uh, this, is, this is Skybet so Hull, Skybet. Hull FC are, are, are not a sponsor <laughs> they're, they are far from bottom which I thought they might be but you know Hull, Hull KR are 12 to 1 to get to the grand final and Hull FC are 22 to 1 so so from the outside and the bookies rarely get it far wrong I don't think many people are thinking of Hull FC getting in the playoffs again. Whereas Hull KR, I think most people are expecting. I think to you've get changed in. it there. Don't you say? 
do I'm, the fans think they're going to be this what I'm, I'm talking yeah. about. I'm, I'm talking I'm about. Him, don't you? I'm talking about generally. Like you're going to commit to a one oh. because you, <laughs> like, let me speak and hmm? you'll get an idea. Some cast fans will think, oh, we can still get playoffs. There's always going to be optimistic fans at clubs, otherwise, you know, sport would be a serious problem. I would like to think there's not going to be serious pressure on Hull FC because, like Joe said, they're, they're making it very clear that they're, they're starting now a five year plan about bringing you through. They've never done it. It's so, bottom four acceptable for an old fan. I would like, I would expect half of Hull FC fans will be realistic and understand that they're likely no to be bottom. Yeah, but you I'm, tell, I'm telling fans. you, that's what I think. My, my you, best not all fans are, fan and I think they're not all fans are delusional. A lot of fans are understanding of where their club is at that time. They know most Hull fans will understand that Hull KR have took the mantle. Whether they'll like, they'll still expect them, and and I still think they've got a chance if if it all goes well. If Truy comes back and starts flying, and and people stay fit, you know, of course they can make a play mm -hmm. higher up, but. They are far from bottom favourites for a reason. And some fans will still be optimistic, but the majority of fans will understand that unless they are not going to be a top four team this year. Or a top I, know it's top four. Four. I just think if they're not in the eight and you're an all FC fan. Well, there's 12 teams, so the will, so, winning. There's 12 teams, so there will mm. be in the eight if they're far from Yeah, that. I think if they're going to But top the eight, eight doesn't matter, it's six it, that counts. I think know, if they so. win the bottom four, the, 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 the boot will go in. The bottom four is for top eight. Yeah, no, no, the bottom four, three, if I've got. London. Are you missing Cass, the point? Finish. London, Cass, teams. London, Cass, yeah. and Hull. Okay? Not Salford. Not, well, I'm going to leave that to end, but I've got, that's where I am. Right, and so I you've got a ninth. I think as a Hull fan, I think that is very disappointing. That's what well, I'm trying to tenth. say. Yeah, yeah, I think that'll be very disappointing. I do, that's third from bottom though. I'm yeah. saying fourth, fifth from bottom, I think is... Right. Well, you said fourth. You got the, you got you got your maths wrong there because you'd be ninth if you were fourth. Yeah, yeah. That's all right. It's all good. It's all good. I, I just think that the pressure on what the red and whites are going to put on them. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. We went to all last year. right? went to Catalans. I had a great time. He, he had about three pies. or so best pie, by the way, the best pie Super League. Yeah, He's all FC with, and James said they've won the record every year. So I can play. I just think. I just think this would be a lot of pressure on. As the will cast because it'll come from within the fans and they're such a close knit place. Hull, Hull, there's no gap for players, there's no gap for supporters, there's no gap for sponsors. Even sponsors will come to town, they're thinking, mm. do I go right or left? Well, well, you know, historically, Hull would have been the big dogs. Now, it's changed. Yeah. You, you know, but we'll, we'll, we'll go on to Hull KR. I think, I think Hull, speaking to a Hull fan who's one of our best mates, as long as they have a good, as if they beat Hull KR once or twice, yeah, I agree with happy. that. <laughs> if not, there's trouble. I think they have to get a win against KR yeah. in the season. Well, it's first game of the season. Yeah, I agree. It's all up. In fact, wrong. They lose both and get hammered thirteen. That's big. Well, the first game, if if KR beat them at their place, big, then obviously starts the season. And it's about being respectable, isn't it? If they come, you know, if they come lower down, but the 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 being. Please Good comment, Hull fans, you're free to free, be brilliant to hear your, your thoughts. Uh, Ince, Hull KR, Oliver Gildart, Petter Hickey, AJ Wallace, Tyrone May, Niall Evels, Neil Chinembi, Jai Whitbread, Reese Butterworth, Gillespie Tanginoa, Joe Burgess. Out, Kenny Dowell, wow, wow. You know, Ethan Ryan, Sam Wood, Jimmy Kynos, Brad Schneider, Jack Walker, Greg Richards, Rowan Mills, Reese Kennedy, Lewis Johnson, Connor Moore. Kane Lynette, Jordan, Abdul. Straight away, guys. I'm absolutely loving the recruiting. I think what they've released, I think the biggest disappointment is Sean Kenny. We've got to give him, I, I didn't give him no raps when he filled that first season. I think I put a bit of boot in. Did I take that back? Absolutely. Probably the best signing they've the had for probably mm. 10 years. I think he's been that good for them. And I certainly didn't think that at first. But I think if you look at this, guys, and I'm not, we can say this publicly. Iku at fullback doesn't do it for me. I don't think he's got the legs. I think he'll end up being centre. And then that becomes a problem because they've probably got four or five centres, including Gildar, including uh, the extension of the other Tom, Thomas, what's his second name? Tom, the right centre. Pasic. 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 They've got Corey Hall, they've got quite, you know, that's yeah. become, I think, the, that night level to end up playing fullback. I think that's what, they haven't run that in training, 
but I think that's the way it'll go. <coughs> Reese Butterworth, a big plug for Reese, uh, who we got up from the Championship one, and everyone said too big of a gap, and we see why would he stay at Dewsbury? Well, okay, our fans, the answer is he's been standout player right through pre season. They absolutely love him. Could become a crowd favourite in years to come. Uh, talk so highly of the place and the place talk so highly of him I think if Parcells last year I think he's a he's, they're going to put him in with Jez and that he said Jez has been brilliant with him Jez didn't forget how he sometimes didn't get that and right. Jez has made a real effort Reese said to me last night you know I can't thank Jez enough he's always trying to ask for more right he's always saying to the work on summer are they the same age or is, is Reese I'd say I'd say they're probably Jez would be a year older uh, 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 yeah I would say so but both what people didn't realise with Reese is he, he, he was the next McShane you know he just lost his way yeah. which a lot of players do Reese will admit his, his, his fat count and that Huddersfield uh, uh, weren't great his fitness levels weren't great he thought he were a, he thought he were an instant first team he didn't think that they were a process he just thought right I've left Bradford for a fee and did he learn he went to Judge Bray and, and, and great thought by the way any player who loses his Super League contract last year this year two years ago look at Reese Butterworth and watch and just take that and if we can get Reese on a podcast someday to tell you how we changed his life he went to work he realised how hard shit were at work but it made him a man he started training on the night himself in the gym he started running on himself he did all his training away from Dewsbury and then trained with Dewsbury he trained like a Super League player yeah. and he's got a three year deal two year and they'll extend it because of his attitude I'm, I'm sure please if you're getting released and you're saying to us on phone like we do regular you know what do you think I should do do you think I should walk away just get the Reese Butterworth manual and have a crack because Reese were close probably close to thinking you know what shall I yeah. I think he'll end up playing 10 years Super League and we'll sit down in 10 years and go wow uh, that were a thing by the way uh, one of the greatest ID spots putting him so we've got guys Gildart Gildart yeah, I don't know I didn't. I finding it really hard I know when he left he was oh, Jimmy. he was he was, he was killing it Wigan but he it was a nice gig for him you know lots of good ball and I've, I've yet to be convinced that in a team who I think are very much in my eyes playoff contenders where it's as much good as bad um, if he has a great year I'll be you know I'm, I'm not going to be shocked by any stretch of imagination because he's been in the NRL he's, he'll be a big money player Um but I, for me, he's got. He, he, I need to see how he does before I get too carried away. Joe, I think overall the signings. This no, sorry, just on Gildar. What was your thoughts? Because he's the big money one. Well, no, I'd say Tyrone May, Hiku, Hiku will be big, big money. Yeah, probably. Well, I'm telling us off, but you know, probably H similar. Hiku and well, if it's if it is similar. Yeah, you're definitely worried. For Lee, he didn't do excellent, did he? He's had a few goes at NRL, never had his moments. It's had his couple of moments, but didn't quite no, no. succeed massively. Um, obviously, we're getting up Gildar from four years ago, but I, I don't know. Big call if he's on the same money as Hicku and makes May, unbelievable, as you said, unbelievable. one of the best halves last year. Centre turned into a half back. And he's replacing Kenny Dowell, isn't it? That's some shoes, is it? Yeah. It's like you trying to get in mind that, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's, well. it's really tough. Um, you've got Pete, you've got Petericu, who's obviously been a North Queensland Cowboy starter for four years now. In and out starter at centre. They're playing him at full back, obviously he did it at Warrington, but whether he can do it, oh, I don't know. It's been a while. He's bigger. He's a bigger dude now. He's a bigger dude than he used to be. Um, I think they're my two. They're your two questions, Gildart and Iku. If they can be successors, you've probably got top two in the league. If they're not, with the money invested, then you're probably panicking a little bit. Because I, I can't see a world in which May's not at least serviceable and very good. Evolds fills the gap doesn't he winger full back can play probably centre can do a lot of things got it all to prove hasn't it yeah, 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 can, been, yeah there's not as well, thing like been injured and then Jai Jai Reese Butterworth and Tanganoa are great money ballers who can fill a spot can fill multiple spots along an, different positions along different positions um, yeah it's skilled art and Hiku for me can they become can they uh, can they become massive successes you've got top two you're competing with Wigan toe for toe there if not you're panicking if here's one for you Jim I'll, I'll ask you this 
they built they built on culture, didn't they? You know, three or four years they built on culture and bringing in players, which we've had a lot to do with personally. But we've watched the growth of mm. you know Cheslett and Mikey. You watch these kids come through an environment, Stozzer. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, well, probably I mean, we could name fifteen Elliot Minicello. They've come through a system coming from Championship, and they've all all of a sudden superstars. The hammer's gone down, and they've gone right, guys. We're here. How do we get to be there? Yeah, and they've gone. We'll spend. Yeah. We've got the investment, and they've gone right. Let's go. This is it. Yeah. So Willie, now from being the people every week when they'd say, "Wow, KR are doing well." They took a lot by shot last year. They never us. We, we talked about them being that for two and a half, three years. This year, there's no shocking value. Everywhere they go, it's everyone's be up for them, and they're gonna be saying, "Mikey May, is that the best combination in Super League?" Well, we're gonna find out. On the back of Jez and Parcel, and on the back of Ikawar Evels at fullback, if that's what mm. we're saying. I, I'm, I'm loving what they've done because I think there's an intent there to win it. There's an intent to win it. I think anything but three from within the system is an absolute disappointment. Right. That's how I, they're going in on this. They're saying top three and anything below that, and I'll be honest with you, they're probably talking about winning it. Jimmy ain't got a deal on this, man. I'm not even going to do it. Tell about this. Turn camera off. Jimmy's got a piece of paper. Table. Right. Top and I think anything seat, anything man. below that is, is a massive disappointment. That's, that's the pressure. Anything below three is a massive disappointment. On my, I think, from what I'm hearing, wow. and where the camp is and where they are, I think that's where they see it. They see as being as high as that. And I think they've got to win something this year, whether it be a grand final or a challenge cup. I, I think they've got to win one of the two. Wow. Or at least be in the finals, haven't they? They've got to be. Yeah, honestly. In the final. They probably took, let's be honest, they probably spent the probably number one or two. I think they've gone into that next level. If, if you're not saying well made it I'll tell you now what made may, may be on fucking just so like effectively we're talking about everyone everyone's at cap but they're overseas I would uh, say you think I would say well, Hickey Hick will be on massive money but to come what back, do you think 300 grand it'd be close I reckon mm. you'll be Gildar to, I didn't realise it'd be on as much money as he might think to that then and then you've got May who will who will be on that big money for well, being at Catalan. Mikey's just signed a new deal. Mikey's like, just listen, they, 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 let me tell you, there's some serious. I'm sure Paul would tell us what the spend would be. Right. There's a massive intent, and if you look at the players that they got rid of, you know, I thought they'd done fantastic, but to them, you can see the ambition, what they're thinking. Sam Woods had been a great little signing for him. Ethan Ryan, great signing for him. Not cost him a lot, but Ethan, Ethan and Sam, see you later. <laughs> Jimmy Kay never quite thinks Snyder never got Jack Walker. I'd have thought Jack Walker was a Snyder, Snyder never got. Yeah, yeah. Snyder, I, I think Snyder obviously wanted to go back to Australia, oh, yeah. so I don't think, I think that's a fact. fact. Yeah. 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 So what is your question? Is it? My question is: is this change of dynamic and actually yeah. now becoming? Well, it is. It's a big. It is a big step back. Lots of clubs go from this. Can that, they keep the culture? So you can keep the culture if these signings buy into it and if they've bought the right people, isn't it? More than ability, it's about people who aren't going to come in and put their feet up and they're coming for the wrong reasons. If you've got anyone coming for money, that's that's not great, is it? I don't know, obviously, what Tyrone May was on in Catalan, but to move to Hull with respect, you'd imagine there's money involved here. He's not moving from a bottom four team to a top four team. He's moving from, well, like for like, and he was at Penrith, many with, he's gone Penrith, Catalans. Yeah, but I mean, just, so, so what I'm basically saying is that I'd be surprised if he's not gone because money's the main influencer. Doesn't mean he's not a great professional, great person, I, I don't know him. If they've got the people right, then of course it's the, it's the next natural progression. However, Will they have lost a little bit of identity and these players who've come through together? Definitely. And there's more expectation. I mean, again, you've obviously, you've both got them really high. Bookies have got them middle of the park, really. Sixth favourites, fifth favourites. So, again, it's probably, can they still catch a few them, under... I had them bottom four last year, bottom six, didn't they? Yeah, bottom four, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but they might still have the ability of catching a few people unaware but not as much as last year and that, that's probably the only reason I've not gone I, I think everyone's I think everyone's ready for them and I think it's whether they can there's some volatile characters in there there's yeah. some there's a bit of petulance in there there's a bit of volatility mm. there's, I think 
it comes down to if Mikey and, and Tyrone hit it off and they can and they're not too similar yeah. and they can form a partnership, yeah, you know, then they are gonna be better than last year. That's how I mm. view it. So I think the big the, the tactical, if we're going into rugby league tactics and the way the game's played, for me it's who's gonna do the kick in. <laughs> because you may add may add obviously we just mentioned him what's his um I'm that bad with names. Mitchell Pierce. Mitchell Pierce. And kicker, Sam to do a kicker, kicker, Sam, kick it. He didn't have to do kick it. Mikey last year had Abdul, uh, obviously, Rowan. It, Mikey wasn't the main kicker at any point. So I think if one of them can step up and find a long, consistent, long kicking game, directional game management type mm. of style, then you, 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 you've got a top two team. If, you, if either of them two can figure out how to play a set and kick it in the right direction and get it nice and deep and consistent, then you yeah, play, 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 play if they can play field position yeah. sort of thing. Maybe Jezel. I was going to say, I think Jezel will take that. Uh, well, it's long Mikey, Mikey, it's Mikey, tough, Mikey right? to get to, for Mikey to be in the next level. His challenges. That's the only thing he's got to get. He's got to yeah. get his consistency. Game of really passing good. and game management, and if he gets that right, I'll play for England this year uh, without a doubt. Mm. Jess could play for England this year. I think both are going for it. I think I just think the ambition in the club is so high, mm. and the investment is so high, and the crowd and everybody is waiting for 15 20 years for this to happen, and it's happening. And I think the pressure's on. Uh, I just have one reservation, and that's whether you can keep that what I last Culture. three or four years. Is the lads always uh, had, had a real good? They were developing together. They was improving yeah, together. Right. There was the, 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 they had Kenny Dowell. You've mm. still got Ryan Hall. You had Danny Maguire, player and then coach. These were these were the ones who all everyone looked up. To. They were the ones who people went, you know, bang. I suppose you'd say that what they have done is they've, they've moved a lot of them on. So it. You know, you're well, not, you're not going to have a situation where there's necessarily these players who were a key part of the team who are now sulking and moping around because mm. clearly the ones who they thought were going to be fringe players for the last See, they didn't get a lot of sulk because that were another thing. No. When, they, when they actually didn't play, they didn't get that way you were at other clubs. This might happen this year. Do you get I don't this? know because I'm saying I think that they've moved a lot of those fringe players on. The yeah. lads who they brought in. But I'm saying Rowan, you know, Rowan, saying Rowan, they Rowan, so, Rowan the never sulked. Even right in the role, I could, Rowan used to, I, I've never right. heard a number three like Rowan Techie and say, you know, and I think that won't happen at all the clubs. I think they had a good group of people even mm. when they didn't play. You didn't hear that Jimmy Kynos had a good attitude when he didn't yeah. play. Did Lewis Johnson, you know, they didn't cause hell on. This time, any of these drop, there's going to be murders. Yeah, but uh, what I'm saying is that it seems that they've got a very clear 17, 20 well, man. you see this week, they're playing Leeds, aren't they? So you'd see this week, Corey Alls, whether they're, they're going to play Corey. Some of the same. It will definitely not play back row, I don't think. But if they play, they're gonna they're gonna nail it this week. The third, the, the one they're gonna go with. Stozer, whether Stozer plays. That's, your... that's how I think the big issue. I think you. I, I respectfully disagree. I think their big issue. They've now got Joe Bird just added on. Yeah. They've got a winger, centre, uh, second, even second row. Looking at the lads, we just don't look after the second row. They've got winger, centre, second yeah, AJ row. Yeah, Wallace, good, good second, little size. Second, second row right. props. No, no, I'm saying. They've got four in every position yes. that can start. Their their issues going to be keeping everyone happy. It's going to be what we said about teams last year. They've got four in every position, literally every position, probably other than prop, where they've probably got a set three or four. Mm. Every other position they are is a but other, massive competition. Well, tell me about centres then. So a Paychich and and Gildar have a, a, a start in the centre. I think he cool. I think he cool well. down as fullback. Right. So yeah, but I think he cool and, and got Corey will also go there. So they've got four. All right, so with respect, so so they've not because got, Pat Hick who's fullback, so they've got Gildar yeah. and a Paychurch. Yeah. So with respect to Corey, I don't think Corey's expecting he's getting in above them two hundred and fifty, oh, yes. two hundred gram players. He's, no, not expect, off pitch, not he's not expecting. He's not expecting half that. He'll be half that. No, right, hundred. Yeah. I don't think he's expecting he's going to be the starting centre. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, Jim. Yeah, he probably is. He's twenty-one right. now. He thinks he's, he thinks. That's so he thinks we're saying Gildar and he's out. Be, be he, he's out. This is more what I would mean for the lads that Corey's had the best pre-season and, he, and, and I heard yesterday that a player's got into chat, you know, one of the leadership groups, you know, right. saying Corey's done enough it's and if it's effort, he, he deserves right. it. I we've don't got, think I think Joe's got a point. I don't we've think Louis Senior who can play centre, the play that centre. Yeah, but I'm that. saying yeah, I don't think Louis. I don't think Louis talking different. Levels, I think I think you've definitely got Ikul Corey. 
I'm not saying I've not got good dad. You've I'm got Ikul Kari. Oh, gonna, uh, you know, Ikul Kari and then Oprovic and Gildad. There's definitely going to be one of them dropped. Iku's fullback. But, but again, I think Iku yeah, will start. Iku's not and then a game, let's say Evolds. I thought he's been signed as a fullback. No, no, but let's say, let's say Evolds is fullback, which I think will happen within two games, mm. right? You've then got Iku can only play one other position. Yeah. So then you've got four centres, okay? If Evolds doesn't play fullback, they're saying he'll play wing. They're saying Evolds will start. This is what you're hearing. Yeah. That means that Ryan Hall's a cert. Yeah. So then you've got, got about nine wingers. <laughs> you've got Joe Burgess is a you've late, got it. late little bonus. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. I think I think you're probably half back at the moment. The safest position where them two fit the play, mm. but they are looking for. A, they're trying to bring a, a third yeah. out. Let's be honest. That's what the word is. We, we, you know, we've got Lenny, but they're trying to bring another half in as a cover. Ucker, mm. Reese will put pressure on the lads. So you've got three, you know, and I know Reese won't get the monk on. We're not saying that. Yeah. But the props they've got about nine. It's first time I heard something last night about something like that. Like, <laughs> so there's going to be. Well, you you only need to look at who will KR send to play yeah. against Sheffield, and you know which who, who's on the periphery. Really. You've got it. You've nailed it. The Sheffield ones, the ones who probably yeah. they've got the question mark, and then you know, it, it, listen, interesting times. Let's go on to Leeds, but I, I think when we come to name it at the end. Willie Peters has done an unbelievable job, no doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Whether we think he did that, he did that. Willie's gone in there. Well, we've missed second row. That's about another eight. eight. Second row. He's, I think. Yeah. He's I'm not. I'm not denying. Okay, I've not got real good depth. He's I'm got. Saying, I think there's a very clear seventeen in my opinion. Right. I reckon. Well, I, could, I reckon I could name the seventeen for the whole well, game. Well, you will have a chance afterwards. He's got. I think. Look, I think Willie's the most ruthless coach in Super League. I think if he were a gunslinger, he would be the one, Billy the Kid. He, he, I think he pulls the trigger and I, bang. And I think his temperament is that. And he's a, he's going for the title that he's going to win, to win. I think he's made it clear to the board. I'm not here for. I think mm. Willie, Willie, two years' time, Willie will be. He thinks he'll be in NRL. I think this is part of the process. Yeah. He needs to win it. He needs to win it with Ulkian. He'll be guaranteed a job over there, without a doubt. So every, in everything. Is pressure, pressure, pressure. Whether that pressure can be held within, that's not the only thing I'm going to put a negative on. If that explodes, that could happen, and it could be halfway through the season looking at each other and blaming everybody. The fingers will come out. So arguably very different to the clubs we talked about earlier, who the pressure is probably going to come more from outside and what some of certain fans expect this mm. is probably more that they are making it really clear internally what they want mm. and more if, than if the if fans don't, yeah definitely yeah, the fans are very loyal and, whether they and finish the, and the outside view i.e. what you know neutrals and bookmakers might think I think they're situation. creating a cauldron and if Willie can fuck, sorry if Willie can make that mixture mix and it becomes a potion you've got a good chance but if it comes one of them in the games that explodes in your face you could Which, be, I'm, I'm on that. I'm, yeah, and, and you've got to have pressure if you're gonna be what they're gonna do. Yeah. But as I say, whether they can handle it.